This is part two of the video describing how to conduct a one-way within Subject ANOVA using SPSS and how to write up the results. So, so far in the last uh, section of the video, we talked about the fact that the overall ANOVA tells us that at least one of the time points is different, but it doesn't tell us exactly which one is different. So, in order to identify which one of the time points significantly differs from the others, we have to do a post hoc test. So post hoc tests are used in ANOVAs whenever you have more than two levels that you're comparing to each other. So in this example, we had three different time points. So since that uh, those three different time points are three levels, um, we don't really know which of those three is different, so we need to do the post hoc test. So the post hoc test is uh, part of the output that we asked ANOVA to give us. Um, and post hoc tests involve um, comparing two pairs of means at a time. So it, it does what's called pairwise comparison. So it looks at two means compared to each other at a time. So I think the easiest way to look at the SPSS output is actually to first just make a note for yourself to identify which different pairs of means that you want to compare in your data set. So there are going to be several pairwise comparisons that we can make in our data set. So the first pairwise comparison we can make is we can compare the mean for the baseline, so the average GRE score at that baseline measurement, we can compare that to the midpoint. So that's one of our pairwise comparisons. So the comparis pairwise comparison, again, just looks at two means compared to each other at a time. So another pairwise comparison we have to make is to compare the baseline measurement to the last or the final the endpoint measurement. And then the one other pairwise comparison there is to make is to compare that midpoint measurement to the end. So as long as you have compared each of your means to each other at some point in this list, it doesn't matter which one comes first versus, um, so it doesn't matter which one comes first versus second, just as long as you've compared each of the means that you have to compare to each other, that's what matters here. So it's easiest just to write down all the pairwise comparisons you have to make, because as you'll see, the output you get from SPSS, is actually quite redundant. Um, so it presents the same information multiple times, which kind of makes it harder to read. So looking at the output from SPSS, uh, these are actually several different tables that I got um, from our output, but they're all going to be important to interpreting your pairwise comparisons. So the first thing I want you to look at is to make sure you examine this. Um, this is, I believe, the first box in your output it tells you which time point is associated with which number. So um, you'll see here in the pairwise comparisons box, it just uses these numbers here rather than baseline, midpoint, and end. So if you um, are having, are working with your own data and maybe it's less obvious like what time one, two, and three would be or whatever your factor is, this is where you're going to find the information about which one is coded with each number. So that's going to be really useful um, to make sure you're interpreting these pairwise comparisons right. Um, another table that's going to be pretty useful to us is going to be, um, you could find this in either dis the descriptive statistics or the estimates box, but we want to look for the box that splits up each time point and reports the mean for each of those time points. So that's going to be really important when we're um, writing up our results of our pairwise comparisons. We're going to want to make sure to report the means for each of those different time points. So you'll find that in one of those other tables. All right, so let's talk about how to actually interpret these pairwise comparisons. So in the previous slide, I talked about how these are the various pairwise comparisons that we have to make. So let's first try and identify this first pairwise comparison, comparing the baseline time point to the mid time point. <clears throat> so we're looking for the baseline time point. 
so time one, and we want to compare it to the midpoint, time two. So the pairwise comparison comparing time one to time two is going to be here in this first line. So we're going to focus primarily on the sig column, and it has those same rules that I told you about before. So anytime our sig value is less than our alpha level, that means that there is a significant difference. So also, let's you know, highlight it on the next slide. So since there was a significant difference based on that sig column that was less than 0 0.05, I'm going to put an asterisk or a star right next to this pairwise comparison. So the pairwise comparison identified that those two time points were significantly different. And so these are the two means associated with the baseline and the midpoint. So those are going to be important when we're writing up our results. Let's talk about the remaining pairwise comparisons we have to look at. So we also had to look at um, comparing the baseline to the endpoint. So looking at our table here, we have our baseline was time one, and then the endpoint was time three. So we're going to find that sig value associated with time one and time three is going to be right over here. So again, that is less than any alpha L level we could ever take. Um, so that would indicate a significant difference. So again, I'm going to go here to my notes and add a little asterisk next to that pairwise comparison. So that pairwise comparison compared mean one and mean three and found that those two means are significantly different. So last but not least, let's look for the output related to the midpoint versus the end. So time two and time three. So here we're going to look for time two and compare it to time three. And we'll follow that across to get our sig value there. So again, that sig value is less than an alpha level of 0.05. So the difference is significant. So again, we're going to go back here to our list and put a little asterisk next to that pairwise comparison. So that pairwise comparison indicates that these two means are significantly different from each other. So all of that we're going to want to report in our conclusion for this analysis. So let's talk about how to write each of these pairwise comparisons up in our conclusion. So going back to our conclusion, you'll see that this is where we ended last time. So we ended here. Um, previously in reporting our eta squared. So then just directly after that in our conclusion, we want to write the results for our post hoc test. So we'll say something like the post hoc test revealed that student scores significantly changed from the beginning. And then there was the mean for the beginning time point compared to the midpoint. And then there's the mean for the midpoint time point. So the time two. So that's our first pairwise comparison that we did, and there are the findings related to that. So we also need to add our two other pairwise comparisons to the conclusion. So we'll also add on this additional sentence. So now I'm just adding here after talking about the beginning compared to the midpoint, I'm going to add another sentence that talks about that second pairwise comparison we did, which compared the beginning to the end. You'll notice that I only reported one of the means here, uh, and that was specifically the mean for the endpoint. And the reason for that is because we already reported the beginning mean right up here. So we just want to make sure that each mean is reported once. We don't want to report the same mean over and over again. So we reported the mean for the end because we had not yet reported that mean yet. So there's our second pair, pairwise comparison. We also found the significant difference between the beginning and the end. And then finally, our last pairwise comparison examined the midpoint compared to the end and found that those two time points are significantly different. So this is the basic way to write up your results for a one way within Subjects ANOVA. Also, another thing that you can do um, and that you might find useful is to create a graph or a figure of these means so that you can graphically present 
these means rather than having to report all of them in the text. So if you did create a figure or a graph of these means, then you actually would not report them in your actual text right up of the results. So it's really just a stylistic issue on whether you'd rather report these means in a figure, table, or in the actual text itself. But that is a description of how to run this analysis in SPSS and also how to write up the results in APA style.